Hi, Elena Brandt Dyer wrote 101 books, of which you know the Chalet School books are the most famous. However, today I'm going to tell you about her first book and part of the series to which it belongs. Her first book, written in 1922, was Jerry Goes to School. Obviously, I don't have an old edition. What I do have is a newer edition republished by the Girls Gone By Publishers, formerly known as Friends of the Chalet School. This book belongs to a series called the La Rochelle series, which has seven books, and the books are very varied and mostly set in Guernsey. But the first books are definitely not set in Guernsey. However, this series is a sister series of the Chalet School, with some of the characters popping up in the Chalet School books later on. Now, Jerry Goes to School, for instance, features Geraldine Shalona, who becomes Greasel's friend in Rivals of the Chalet School. She shows up along with Greasel in Rivals. You know, she's studying music along with Greasel in Florence. The two have met in Florence. They become good chums and they take the kids out for a walk in Rivals of the Chalet School. And uh, Jerry is very good at, you know, maintaining discipline uh, among the Chalet girls. And there are other characters in the La Rochelle series as well who feature in the Chalet School books. Now, why have, am I not talking about all seven books at once? I'm going to talk to you only about the first two books uh, today, and then I'm going to tell you about another four in one go. One book in the series is very problematic, incredibly problematic, and deserves its own video. Brent Dyer did not write her first Chalet School book until 1925, by when she had already written three different La Rochelle books here. She had written Jerry Goes to School, this one in 1922, Ahead Girls Difficulties in 1923, and in 1924 came Maids of La Rochelle. Now, let's talk about Jerry Goes to School. The heroine, obviously, the protagonist, is 11-year-old Jerry Chaloner, Geraldine. She features in four books, actually, written by EBD. This one, Ahead Girls Difficulties, the immediate sequel, Seven Scamps, also in the La Rochelle series, and then in Rivals of the Chalet School. And then, you know, she quickly disappears. I would love to see more of Jerry, including whom she married. I hope it wasn't a doctor, but, you know, Paul Trevenor or somebody like that. Paul Trevenor would have been lovely. Now, who's Paul Trevenor? Geraldine has been brought up by two aunts, both of whom are very Victorian in their ways, dressing, way of life, etc. So Jerry, when we first see her, is Geraldine. And she's got, you know, a young Princess Victoria's hairstyle. She does embroidery in her spare time, very demurely seated among her aunts, uh, who believed that children must be seen and not heard. So that's Jerry. Now, one of the aunts needs to go to Spain for recovery, and uh, the other wants to accompany her. So Jerry is sent to the rectory, run by Vicar, the Reverend Mr. Trevenor, who has 10 children the eldest Margaret, to baby Betty Trevenor. Those children go to school, most of those children, they go to St. Peter's, the girls, that is, uh, St. Peter's High School, and Jerry has to accompany them. So uh, they're first, you know, a bit taken aback by how old-fashioned Jerry is in her dressing, in her ways, in her speech, and then, you know, they become chums eventually, all ten of them, with Jerry. And she loses her old-fashioned way and becomes a very jolly modern day school at the time for the time modern day school girl now because this is ebd's first book um a lot of people have said that there are the, it, it feels very disjointed when you read this book for me the big problem was you know the large number of characters and so many things happening which happens here as well her first two books maybe that was a new writer find, trying to find her group so, you know, lots of characters, lots and lots and lots happening. So in this one book alone, there are a number of, you know, the school story tropes, the, the school story cliches. An orphan, right, enters a new family. An old girl within the family, mind you, doesn't like a new girl, the new girl. The new girl is having problems fitting in. There are mischievous middles. There is a major accident, a dramatic rescue, after which everybody becomes chums and the rivalry ends. You know, a lot of cliches there, uh, which were seen in several other school stories. However, there are a few differences in here. First of all, 
This is a very old-fashioned girl. I mean, that's the problem with her fitting in. It's not that she's spoiled. It's not that she's used to having her own way. It's not that she th thinks she's academically brilliant. It's not a superiority complex, none of that stuff. It's just that she's been brought up in a very different way, in a very different era, if you must. Secondly, this is a day school story, not a boarding school story. They go home every day. They, there is a lot of family there, uh, you know, evenings at the fireside and so on, and mornings at home even, you know, the rush of, you know, going to school every day and the walk to and the walk back and weekend activities and people going to tea with other pupils in, in other people's homes friendships character development is different because there is a family element there as well these two are bo both set in day schools not in boarding schools anyway the plot in brief uh geraldine as i told you has had a very old-fashioned upbringing um she comes to live with the Treveness and jill trevenor one of the children doesn't really like this newcomer jill is very headstrong and set in her ways and jill doesn't like jerry and jerry quickly becomes popular uh, within the family which jill resents all the more and paul trevenor the eldest brother uh, becomes chums with jerry challoner so she starts going to school with the rest of the trevenors uh, to saint peter's and she meets the Athertons. The Athertons, Rosamond Atherton, Corn Atherton, Allegra Atherton, they're all going to school alongside Jerry. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the Atherton, Athertons in a minute. And then she has trouble fitting in with classes. She, uh, she actually gives a head of a bit of a shock with her very Victorian teaching. And the headmistress is Miss Catcherside, and she puts her in form third, 3A. Meanwhile, the juniors fag for the prefects, not fag, run errands for, do chores for, not, you know, very dated use of word that because some of the seniors are very high-handed in how they deal with the juniors, the juniors decide to go on strike and refuse to fag, refuse to cooperate, and they're quite condescending towards the juniors as well, who naturally resent this treatment, and what happens then, how the strike is dealt with and how Jerry finds her in place within the school as well as within the family. It takes up a whole chunk of the book. The only problem is while the strike ends, they don't tell you how it ends, whether the seniors, you know, give in or, you know, uh, decide to make amends for their treatment of the juniors, or, you know, whether the juniors decide to stop fagging altogether or resume running errands for, I should stop saying fagging. It says so in the book, I'm saying, yeah. And Jerry takes to her new life and her school immediately like a fish to water she joins a secret society in the shades of the ssm from the chalet school however she doesn't completely let go of her ideas immediately because you know one of the children one of the treveners who with whom she's living wants to become an actor and she calls acting wicked so yeah you have that ingrained victorian value system there i think she she sort of i wouldn't say gives in too easily that's not how it is i mean she did want to go to school she did want to become modern yes but you know for somebody who was used to nothing else but old-fashioned clothes and old-fashioned hairstyle and an old-fashioned way of speech i feel that she adapts to her new lifestyle without a murmur very very quickly it would have been a bit more gradual in real life if this was a real person i feel yeah she calls acting wicked at the beginning suddenly you know she's completely modern that's how it works yeah she should have should have taken a bit more time also uh while there was character development of jerry and some of the other kids um there wasn't i mean i would have liked to see more screen time given to some of the other kids for instance betty trevenor the baby the youngest um, has a habit of hitting the nail on the head very, very thoroughly. I don't, I, and you know, she loves keeping secrets. She does it very, very well. So I'd have loved to see a bit more of the baby Trevenor. But maybe, you know, because this essentially was to become a school story, there was no room for uh, developing every character there. And Jill Trevenor, who resents Jerry, uh, goes to Jerry's room one night and causes a midnight battle. While Jerry gives as good as she gets, the fact is that it was Jill who went in and initiated said battle. It was Jill who had all these grie perceived grievances against Jerry. And I felt that there was very little disciplining of Jill as such within the family, within the family, even from the parents. They were, they just said, oh, Jill, when, you know, she was 
blatantly and openly rude to Jerry. And then obviously she, because she's headstrong and disobedient, she goes skating, um, falls in when the ice breaks and is dramatically rescued by Jerry. And then they become chumps. So Girls Gone By has actually put uh, Jerry rescuing Jill from the skating pond uh, on the cover, which is a reproduction of the original cover dust jacket. So is it disjointed? A bit, yes. Compared to uh, her later books, Brenda's later books, yes, it is a bit disjointed, but you know, not in a way that you can't read it, not in an awkward manner. There are too many characters to keep count of, but you know, I suppose if you have read all 58 of her Shelley School books, that's nothing new there. Lots and lots of characters. Some cliches, some dated language, yeah, but, you know, nothing very upsetting. I think that for a very first novel, this was quite well written. And it was nice, yeah, a very nice read, a nice plot there. Nice story. And now we come to the immediate sequel, Ahead Girls Difficulties. Obviously, the editions that I have are from Girls Gone By publishers. I don't have the original uh, first editions, and I don't think I can even find them. So this book, again, is about St. Peter's students, day school students here we meet we we see more of we've already met her in jerry goes to school we see more of rosamond atherton who is a jolly efficient and very likable character who is one of the youngest head girls of saint peter's high however there are no you know usually in the chalet school books if somebody is appointed head in an unexpected manner there are, there's at least one other kid who's presenting that why should i be a head girl not that young kid i'm older Ness, you know, you don't have that here. Everybody is accepting Rosamond. Now, Rosamond Atherton becomes, later becomes Rosamond Willoughby and the mother of Blossom and Judy Willoughby, whom we see in the Chalet School. Con Atherton later becomes Lady Con Willoughby, Mary Rex Willoughby. So these are characters. And, I mean, I would have liked to see more of these characters later, even with the Shelley School books, but I suppose, you know, EBD wanted to concentrate on Joe Maynard, Joe Bettany, and the other Shelley characters and sort of dumped these people. Anyway, there is another cliche here, a subplot that she's used in the Shelley School books as well. The head, Miss Catchesign, has an accident. We've seen this in Gay Lambert at the Shelley School. And it's not just EBD. Dimsey goes to school begins with the head leaving. So, yeah, some similarity to other school stories, including the chalet school itself. Gay Lambert of the chalet school begins with the head having an accident. Ms. Annesley, Ms. Wilson having an accident. So they appoint somebody called Miss Bob, who's, who is an awful head. However, in this case, it's not exactly the same thing. Uh, the senior mistress who deputizes for the head, that is Miss Phillips, is quite competent, quite efficient. So um, it's not as the, you know, the, the replacements are thoroughly horrible heads, and the school doesn't fall apart in the head's absence. When the book opens, there are financial problems among the Athertons. There was an investment in a copper mine which went uh, awry. So yeah, there are financial problems, and Rosamond is under pressure to get a scholarship in order to continue her studies. There is a plague of diphtheria in the area, and uh, the doctor who is treating most people is Mrs. Atherton's younger brother, I think younger, brother, Dr. Ralph Farringford. I'd have liked to see more of Dr. Ralph Farringford. And I think after about four or three or four books, EBD, you know, went on a marrying spree, ma marrying her characters off that to each other. Um, she hadn't started on that in this book. Otherwise, Dr. Ralph Farringford would in all probability have married Nell Helen Trevener from Jerry Goes to School. So again, in this book, a lot, a lot, a lot is happening. Rosamond wants to succeed in academics, in sports, in extracurricular activities. She wants the school to succeed. She herself is writing an essay in order to win the Vickers Prize. She, she wants to get the Verulam Scholarship in order to continue her studies. So there is a major fire in which her prize-winning essay is burnt out and then she has to rewrite the entire thing. There's trouble at home with her sister, Rallegra Atherton, rebelling, and after diphtheria, uh, Corn Atherton has to be taken to the south of France on holiday along with their mother and one of the brothers. There are some rags from the mischievous juniors. There's uh, putting catnip in one of the coat pockets of uh, one of the seniors, 
and all the cats in town follow the guard. Meanwhile, the juniors come up with their own magazine, which is separate from uh, the senior, the, the school magazine. And the juniors aren't exactly, you know, polite about their feelings for their seniors. So there's a bit of ragging there as well. There is also an outbreak of sentimentality, a massive outbreak of sentimentality led by new children, uh, Aveline Meredith and Adelicia. How Rosamond deals with the sentimentality and cures it, puts an end to this um, adoration business is wonderful. I feel that, you know, that was very, very, very brainy, the apt punishment without, you know, being inappropriate or anything. Very apt punishment there. Obviously, at the time, uh, such sentimentality in schools was frowned upon. It was actually frowned upon in the convent, in the old girls' convent to which I went as well. There were instances of teachers um, ticking off children for, you know, being too fond of or spending too much time with certain seniors. So, yeah, I suppose this is something that is, that hasn't really gone away, even during a millennial's upbringing. And then there's more drama as well as a tennis match and one of the children, one of the players has injured herself and Rosamond has to play during the last minute and um, she actually wins the match. And for the first time, St. Peter's defeats the Grange School uh, for the first time in four years. It all culminates with a successful speech day, that is the last day, and Rosamond wins the Special Eng English Prize and the Vicar's Prize for the Best Essay and the Verulam Scholarship, so she can continue her studies. There's other good news in store for the Atherton's as well. The shares come all right, a turn up trumps the copper mine shares, so financially they're better off than they were at the beginning of the book. Uh, Jerry is going to Florence to further her music studies. Miss Catcherside is going to get married and we're told that the Athertons are going to Gunsink for a holiday where uh, the next book that is Maids of La Rochelle will be set and they are going to meet those maids, that is the Temple Sisters in the next book, that is Maids of La Rochelle. So that is a head girl's difficulties. Again, like Jerry goes to school, lots happening, lots of different characters a plague of diphtheria, a major, you know, fire, um, head having an accident, people getting married, people leaving school, everything coming on to Rosamond's uh, young shoulders as head girl, um, an outbreak of sentimentality, lots and lots happening. Less disjointed than Jerry goes to school and slightly fewer characters. I think this is where Brent Dyer is finding her, you know, groove, her writing style. So yeah, this, it can only get better book by book. That is not to say that Jerry Goes to School was a god-awful book. It was saying it was. I liked it. I know a lot of people have it, but I suppose if you compare it to, say, Joe to the Rescue or something, it, you know, falls short. But, you know, read on its own for a first book, very good effort there. I liked it a lot. So those are my thoughts on the first two books uh, in the La Rochelle series, the first books written by Eleanor Brent Dyer long before the chalet school came into existence. Jerry Goes to School and A Head Girl's Difficulties. Stay tuned because I'm going to be discussing Maze of La Rochelle and uh, the other La Rochelle, the, you know, the Temple Sister stories shortly, and then do Seven's Counts on its own because it is a problematic book. So stay tuned for those videos. So have you read Eleanor Brent Dyer? Which is your favourite book by her? Um, have you read the La Rochelle series? What are your thoughts? Do tell me all of that in the comments below. So that's all from me for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please do give me a thumbs up. Please do hit the subscribe button. Please do ring the notifications bell. I'll speak to you soon.